I worked on the Cody Star, which was our newspaper. I was the features editor. Mm -hmm. I was selected by the Detroit News and Free Press to attend the Minority Journalism Workshop at the University of Michigan. So while I was still a student at the Cody High School, I had a chance to live on campus. I experienced that life and I loved it. Mm -hmm. I knew then I wanted to attend the University of Michigan. So I was accepted, I had a full ride. Um, I loved all my roommates yeah. <laughs> and I learned so much. And I ate a lot of Domino's pizza, if I'll give them a plug. So uh, one of the things though that I really, really appreciate is the multicultural environment. Mm -hmm. I had, before I left campus, I had uh, a Caucasian roommate from New York who had mm -hmm. never lived with an African American. Mm -hmm. Her best friend was Jewish. Mm -hmm. I ended up having a roommate who was from Alaska, and that was an experience. Mm -hmm. And I had a great friend who was Asian. Mm -hmm. So learning and sharing was so important. Mm -hmm. But I found out we were all the same, basically. Mm -hmm. So that experience, uh, I think, afforded me just a great opportunity to thrive in the business community mm -hmm. in which I work now. Uh, basically, the University of Michigan the sports, the fellowship, the camaraderie, all the things that came together for me as an inner city uh, student from Detroit mm -hmm. just made uh, that experience something that I talk about all the time. In recruiting people mm -hmm. for the University of Michigan, you couldn't go to a better school. Mm -hmm. So I love it. Mm -hmm. My years there, I did my student teaching between four different schools. Mm -hmm. People couldn't believe that there were four schools there. And I said, yes, because there were two alternative high schools. Mm -hmm. I did my student teaching at Pioneer High School, mm -hmm. Huron High School, Earthworks, and Community High School. Mm -hmm. So I came back and taught just for a few minutes, and then I moved into my area um, of study, which was communications. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. As a matter of fact, I want to share, too, that I had the experience of being a part of the Women in Communications mm -hmm. on campus. And then I transitioned into the professional chapter once I graduated. I had a wonderful instructor, Marion Marzoff, mm -hmm. who encouraged me to continue writing. And I did that for a while until mm -hmm. I found out I could make more money in sales. Yeah. <laughs>Experience I'd love to talk about. Mm -hmm. I was the first from my family mm -hmm. to ever attend college. Mm -hmm. And my parents were so proud. Mm -hmm. And I think there was, you know, of course, when you just talk about that one child, oh, my child is at University of Michigan, mm -hmm. the whole family would come up on the weekends because I missed them so much. And mom would bring that home cooked meal mm -hmm. to share with my roommates. So I had the younger sisters, and I had one older. Mm -hmm. uh, the younger sisters I would bring up. Uh, during the Little Sisters weekend, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I did have one sister, Brenda Moraney, to follow mm -hmm. behind and attend mm -hmm. the University of Michigan. And um, it's just something that we talk about, something that we have in common, mm -hmm. and I love it. During the years uh, of my education on campus, there was a, a great unifying experience of black people, as I, I have to define it that way, because mm -hmm. We had to look around and say, there aren't that many of us, mm -hmm. so we might as well learn from each other and see how we can help each other. Mm -hmm. So there were programs on campus to help us, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that and all those who contributed to our success in actually graduating from school successfully. Mm -hmm. Involved. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, after I graduated, we had the reunion of black graduates. Now mm -hmm. it's called AAAC, mm -hmm. the African American Alumni Council. Mm -hmm. But I'm also involved with the larger group, the Alumni Association. Mm -hmm. I'm involved with the Detroit Association of University of Michigan Women. Mm -hmm. I'm the immediate past president and mm -hmm. current uh, uh, luncheon chairperson. And our mm -hmm. luncheon is coming up and we invite you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I've uh, tried to stay involved and, and in touch. I'm also involved with the Alumni mm -hmm. Council, which is the umbrella group of all of the auxiliaries of women's mm -hmm. groups across the state. So I, I'm on campus quite a bit. I love it and I love my involvement.
quite interesting, the turn of events. I attended Cody High School as part of their magnet program, which allowed me to leave the region that uh, I lived in for that school and attend the school of choice for business. So I was in a business program, took some college prep courses. Mm -hmm. But again, my passion had always been journalism and writing. So um, all the things that I learned in that business program, shorthand, mm -hmm. ended up helping me. Mm -hmm. During the lectures, I would take notes, and we, we didn't have the recorders and, you know, like we do now. We have everything. Mm -hmm. So um, that helped me. But as I moved from the business part of the high school background and training into the journalism program at the University of Michigan, um, Everything that I learned, and I combined the education and the journalism program, I said, well, what if I graduate and I can't find a job at a television or a newspaper, television station, newspaper, mm -hmm. I can teach, and that's what I did. Mm -hmm. But I was able to draw from my experience in high school with the business background and combine it with the journalism background mm -hmm. and move into, first of all, I taught briefly, then I went into radio sales, then I moved to Illinois and worked for a television station where I was, a where I was the public relations director mm -hmm. and I produced three television shows. Mm -hmm. wow. Ultimately, I did host one of the shows and so that television background and my writing skills mm -hmm. you know, enabled me to do that job and mm -hmm. I came back to Detroit um, and worked in sales at a newspaper and that's mm -hmm. where I've been for quite a number of years okay. now. So the sales background allows me to utilize my communication skills, mm -hmm. my people skills. I love people <laughs> and I love being out and about in the community. I'd like to talk about Mary Sue Coleman okay. and how proud I am of her mm -hmm. having been the first female president of the University of Michigan. Yeah. And she did come to our group as our speaker for one of our luncheons. Mm -hmm. And following now uh, that we have Schlissel, I hope I said his name correctly, <laughs> <laughs> President Schlissel, has said many times that he's committed to diversity mm -hmm. and he will do all that he can to ensure that inner city children have the opportunity to attend the great University mm -hmm. of Michigan, as I'm saying, the great mm -hmm. University of Michigan. Um, the relationship between the campus and Detroit could be a little better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad now that we have this location yeah. right in Detroit, yeah. the admissions office, and it affords the opportunity for high school students to come here and interact and see and be mm -hmm. interviewed or have the relationship with the staff. And um, I'd like to see more things done um, where there will be interaction between the students currently enrolled mm -hmm. and those who are straddling the fence in their decision. And I think sometimes when you can connect with somebody who's already there, mm -hmm. if you're apprehensive or you know, you're kind of frightened about going to a large university, they can share. So we do have, as part of the African American Alumni Council, uh, a program where we interact with the students. So, but those are students on campus right. already, mm -hmm. so the alumni will go and talk with them. Mm -hmm. But I'd like to see students who've maybe completed their first or second year come back and talk to mm -hmm. the students here. Let's see, where do I want to start? Oh, I, I, I really love the university and everybody knows that. Yeah. So my, from my license tag to what's hanging on my mirror to work, it's all University of Michigan, okay? So the rivalry, of course, between Ohio State and Michigan State, I have those people who work in the office, right? So you know, whenever we would win, I would drink my blanket on their, on their, <laughs> on their chair. So, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting now that I see that Michigan State and the University of Michigan can come together in a mm -hmm. friendly tailgate party, and that's what the African American Alumni Council mm -hmm. um, does each year, it allows us all to get together, and then the, it's fun, mm -hmm. all in fun. My godson graduated from Michigan State, mm -hmm. uh, but my sister Brenda graduated from the University of Michigan. Her daughter, my niece, graduated from the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. My daughter graduated from the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. So any young person that I can help or advise or inspire, mm -hmm. I will certainly say I encourage them to attend the University of Michigan for the experience.
I would say embrace the experience, the opportunity, the mm -hmm. challenges. Mm -hmm. um, learn as much as you can and try to build, um, how can I say this? Build on your diversity. Build something that you will look back on 30 years from now and say, you know, I had that experience with people from all around the country, from all over the world, mm -hmm. and we had so much more in common. Mm -hmm. And so we all are one people striving for the same thing mm -hmm. in education and something that will give us an opportunity to earn a living and to pass on the knowledge that we have. So it's so important sometimes though for us to see, and I, I, I didn't mention one person that I understand is still on campus there, uh, Derek Scott mm -hmm. um, was part of that African American alumni group, mm -hmm. and he's still on campus influencing young people, but he was an inner city person, had the U of M experience, stayed there and taught, mm -hmm. and you know was able to actually assist more than we know those people who may have run into a problem in the engineering school, you know, and you know how men can talk to men, and mm -hmm. I'm glad they're women now and the STEM program is big, but mm -hmm. back then it was mm -hmm. primarily men. The business school I'm quite proud of. I have quite mm -hmm. a few friends who graduated from the business school. Yeah. Yeah. So I just think there's so much there at the University of Michigan. I had a chance to go up on North Campus and it's changed so. Mm -hmm. I stayed at Bates too years ago, wow. but uh, just looking back and just and then learning about Google and the young men, <laughs> yeah. I said everything really happens in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. Everything starts in Ann Arbor. <laughs> I love the University of Michigan health system, mm -hmm. and um, what else is there that I'm just really when I look at the areas around Ann Arbor, Eastern Michigan University, mm -hmm. and I still say. Everything goes back to Ann Arbor because we are the lead and the leaders. Mm -hmm. Most people take the lead from the University of Michigan. And I'm, I'm listening to this as I'm working, mm -hmm. as I'm listening to the news. I, I love it when I hear the report, you know, University of Michigan study says, mm -hmm. you know, or we're projecting what's going to happen. And we're, I'm, I'm really a part of everything that I hear at U of M, I want to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. So again, you see the pride that I have from being a Wolverine. Mm -hmm. And my last name is Moraney, so I proudly wear that M on my oh, chest yeah. for Moraney <laughs> and for Michigan. So I, I enjoy talking about U of M.